Welcome to Showcase Radio. That was guitarist Michael Stanton leading the C.R. Echo Band in an instrumental version of Our Thanks Needs Mending. Good evening. I'm Chris Duval, and I'd like to welcome you to a very, very special Chris Duval Presents. Because tonight we are going back six years to when Charles Ecker and Frankie M. both sent me music for consideration for airplay on what was then Splash Radio. And we're gonna go right up to date with a very special award-winning song. And tonight I have both the guys in the studio. Charles, good evening and a very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you, Chris. It's really an honor to be here tonight. I'm so appreciative of this. And of course, we extend that warm welcome to Frankie M. Good evening, Frankie. Very happy to be on the show with you, Chris. Uh, I appreciate it very much. I have great pleasure in being able to call both Charles and Frankie my friends through their music and camaraderie that we have shared over the years. So much so that Frankie took me under his wing with my vocal. He now produces everything that I do and record under his label to Law Records out of New Jersey. In the next two hours, you will hear some music from the artists themselves, and we'll also be playing some music from artists that have been chosen both by Charles and Frankie for their outstanding talent. And then there will be two other special songs that will be my picks. We're going to kick off the proceedings tonight with the first song from Charles Ecker or should I say the C.R. Ecker Band. It's called Your Smile Says It All, and lead vocals on this particular recording are from Amber Rose.
song Charlie please tell me what was behind that particular song Chris that is such a special song to me that's the wedding song I wrote for Linda and here's how it came about <clears throat> after uh, after the nuptials Linda was expecting that uh, the band would play uh, there is love by Peter Paul and Mary uh, that's at least what she had planned with her mother but nobody bothered to ask me what I wanted to do. And she didn't know that I'd already prepared a, a brand new, fresh, original song. And uh, you just heard it. And boy, to see her smile when she first heard it. And she says to me, uh, you wrote that? I said, of course. What do you expect? You know, so uh, it's been 33 years since I met Linda, 30 years uh, this year since we were married. And that is definitely our song. And it's become one of the more popular songs that I wrote. Well, Charlie, I'm also very, very pleased that you sent me both tracks, in fact, one by, uh, by Amber Rose, which we just heard, and one by Michael Stanton, which have been played uh, on Splash Radio, and now what is Showcase Radio. Right, this now takes me up to my second uh, favourite song that uh, comes from the C.R. Echo Band. It's a song called uh, A Bright Tomorrow. It's uh, one of your first, I, fact, I think it was your first Christian song that you wrote. So this is A Bright Tomorrow. Speak to everyone on the earth. 
simple thing to help us make a better world. Be kind, lend a hand to folks in need. Be loving, care for all life's creatures. Have faith in God. That really is a beautiful song, Charles. Uh, and for me, it is probably one of the best things that I think you've done. And congratulations. Would you mind telling me and the audience the intricacies behind that song? Yes, it's a song that I wrote about goodness. Goodness extended to fellow men and women throughout the world. I was working on this song in November of 2015 and just about had it done on a Friday. I, uh, I think it was like Friday the 22nd. Heard the news about what was going on in Paris. Contacted you. You said, can you have it done by Tuesday? Because we're going to do a special program for the National Day of Mourning in uh, France because of the mm -hmm. bombings. So. Michael Stanton and I worked through the, the weekend very hard to get it done in final form. And uh, there's some complex instrumentations in there. We got, we got that all taken care of on Monday. It was sent to you. You got it four hours before your broadcast. But the real intent of that song at a time of turmoil, even before the Paris bombings, and turmoil that continues to this day, was just to compose something about being nice to each other. That's my Unitarian Universalist background. I also gave this song away. Still, still am doing that now through CD Baby. Uh, is 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 my way of offering a gift to those that might be inspired by it. And I also appreciate you getting that song to me uh, for a deadline for uh, one of my. Wednesday shows. In fact, I'm very lucky that uh, I managed to showcase nearly everything that you produce. And um, I'm eternally grateful for letting us hear or letting me air your music on Showcase Radio. The station with the best, 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 best music. Best music. I love the I music. Love the music. Best music. All the best music. All the best presenters. Showcase radio. And I have to go back to Charles now. And uh, my third and final favorite choice Emma Jean.
five pounds quicker When your soft wet lips set me trembling Way deep down inside something very very special uh foot tapper i know that was uh special for everybody that listened to it was it special for you charles i had such a kick writing this song you just heard the payoff it's a marriage proposal and what's interesting from a construction point of view it's my only words first song i've ever done took me a long time. I'd say it probably took me over 50 or 60 hours to write this. But the end result was really, really, uh, it, was, it was just so much fun to do because uh, it's modern country. I used a, a, a technique called a millennial whoop in it, which has become uh, uh, more accepted now that Katy Perry uh, started doing it about four years ago. And um, 
it's just a cute little song. Uh, the reference to Sadie Hawkins Day, that goes back to the 30s from the Little Abner comics. And Sadie Hawkins Day is the one day of the year where girls can ask a guy to go out for a, you know, a milkshake and go out for a dance or, you know, go at a dance, can go dance, whatever. Uh, so that's why I put it in there because he's a shy guy and this pretty young girl comes up and asks him to dance. And two years later, he finally, finally pops the question. And it really is a showstopper. Hi, this is Charles Ecker, and you're listening to Showcase Radio with Chris Duvall. Well, now we come to the part of the interview where uh, we're going to play Frankie M's and Charlie Ecker's picks to click. And I am going to make them sing for their supper because <laughs> they're on the show. we better make use of them, don't we? So uh, I'll start with you, Charlie, if I may. And uh, I'll leave it to you to introduce your three clicks to pick the songs and the artists. The first one is in the pop category. Her name is Cheryl Nye. She's from Montreal. And she's the first person I proposed to you, Chris, to play on your station. She has been on Reverb Nation now at number one for the greater part of the last six years. I met her through a very small internet station called Nashville Universe. She was the first person that came on to the site when I was there and, and liked my music. So we started a internet uh, uh, conversation that way and then uh, through the chat room on uh, what was then Splash Radio. Um, she is just very dynamic in both her sound and her style. So this is the first song, which has really become her signature song, uh, that was ever heard on Splash Radio called Eyes of a Stranger.
Charlie, that was a, a, a fabulous first pick to click. Uh, it was, of course, Cheryl Nye. And I know Cheryl reasonably well. And I know they're a very close-knit family uh, with her uh, sister, Karen, her mum, Esther, who I think is absolutely wonderful. And, of course, her dad, who sadly passed not so long ago. This is Leo Just from the band Relic. You're listening to the fabulous Chris Duval on Showcase Radio. Ciao, baby. The second person that I recommended to Chris was a young man named Cal Moon, who's from the Pacific Northwest. He's amazing. I met him when he was 17. His, uh, his voice, uh, extremely dynamic. Uh, he's got a timbre, very, very reminiscent of Randy Travis. And for those of you who are not familiar with country, Randy Travis is one of the living legends of this particular type of music. He bases himself in Nashville, um, appearing at clubs there quite often. And I think the important thing about Cal, he's a very hardworking, dedicated performer who's on the road most of the time, plays three to four times a week live in different uh, venues, large and small. But I think when I first heard him, there was something about him that just stood out among country artists, uh, particularly traditional country artists, because you don't hear that many young people doing that type of music anymore. And I think it's interesting to note that Kale tours throughout the United States continuously. So with that said, I'd like you to listen to the first song of his that uh, was played by Chris. It's called Cheyenne. I've been on the road Days are lonely Nights are cold Thought I needed freedom Oh, but now I know Everything I needed Was waiting back at home Sweet Cheyenne Where I grew up Where I learned to ride Where I fell in love I'm only half a man She's everything My Cheyenne I pray Cheyenne Still in Wyoming I pray she'll give me Second chance The big spotlight No longer glowing I pray she'll forgive me let me be her man Now I'm going home To my Cheyenne Sweet Cheyenne The girl I love Pure as angel Sent from above I was such a fool to ever want to leave. I pray Cheyenne could still love me. On the 31 miles till I reach town, I pray Cheyenne is still around. She ain't answered her phone. It's been four days. Lord, I hope Cheyenne. She'll give me a second chance A big spotlight No longer glowing I pray she'll forgive me Let me be her man Now I'm going home To my Cheyenne
in Wyoming. I pray she'll give me a second chance. The big spotlight no longer owns me. I pray she'll forgive me and take my hand. Now I'm going home to my shame. All I can say is that uh, Kel Moon, uh, I can see clearly, is going to have a long and successful time in country music. My third choice is someone I met coming up on three years ago at the Hollywood Music and Media Awards. Her name is Tiffany Ashton. She's from North Carolina. She's got a style that is just beyond compare. Voice, charisma on stage. Already, and this is in the last not even 18 months, she's appeared as an opening uh, performer, opening act performer for the brothers uh, Osborne uh, and Billy Currington. And uh, most recently for um, uh, one of the best known groups of all time, the Oak Ridge Boys. The song that you're going to hear now is the first one that she she uh, distributed. And it's what's interesting is we met at the Hollywood Music Awards. Uh, I had won the year before in Christian. She won that year in uh, in country. And she's coming back uh, in uh, November. And she and I are going to go head to head. This is going to be a lot of fun in the country category. I only found out about this last Thursday that Tiffany has been named one of eight featured performers at the Nashville New Year's Eve Gala at the Opryland Hotel. This is a big deal. And she just constantly amazes me. She sizzles, she soars, and I think she's going to be one of the big, big stars in Nashville very, very soon. So I would like to introduce to you Tiffany Ashton, and the name of the song is Southern Sweetheart. Friday night bonfires in tank tops and cut She's got the heart of a rebel no one can tame Born to be wild, born to be free She's a southern 
and what a sweetheart she is. She's everybody's sweetheart. She's a good-looking girl that has everything. She has a vocal. She can play that guitar really, really well. And um, again, name up in lights. Hello, this is Sherilyn of Sherilyn and Frankie M. Wherever you are in the world, you can always hear the best music from the best independent artists anywhere on Showcase Radio every Wednesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. UK with Chris Duvall and Chris Duvall Presents. Well, there we had Charles Ecker's Fix to Click. An excellent choice as they are too. And uh, I am also very privileged that Charles decided that I should be the first one to play their music. Uh, and again, I said it once, I'll say it again. I'm internally grateful, Charlie. A big thank you on my end, that's for sure, Chris. So that leaves us nicely on to the latest success, Shimmering White Satin Black Tuxedo, which was nominated and indeed won Best Song in the Cabaret category of the Academia Music Awards, recognising excellence in music. Just to say... This is no small accomplishment. It's something to be very proud of indeed, and the equivalent of a Grammy in the world of mainstream music. So, Charlie, you wrote the lyrics. What on earth made you approach your friend and mine, Frankie M., to collaborate with you on this song? Well, first of all, Chris, it's a major departure for me since country music has been my my forte for so many years. Uh, Back in February, I was thinking about expanding and doing some different kinds of music. Um, I had gotten into the Grammys last December, and I went to a Grammy uh, party in early February. And one of the senior people there said to me, you know, you've you've established yourself as a songwriter. You got the Career Country Songwriter Award at LA Music Awards last fall. You really ought to think about, you know, moving in some other directions, you know, just try some different things. So I started to think about what could I do? You always are told to write about what you know. And in my case, I had uh, spent four wonderful years working in Manhattan a while ago. And I started to write down the notes, the lyrics to uh, kind of a song uh, reminiscence about being single in New York. And when I got it done, I'm thinking, who would be really perfect to sing this and of course i thought of frankie because i I was aware of him uh we had listened to each other's music for six years through you so i approached him and i sent him the words and i'd say within six weeks or so he came back with this wonderful melody for shivering white satin uh black tuxedo i just wanted to kind of think back of what it was like when i was young and at the same time I wanted to make it a tribute to the Big Apple. So that's how that part transpired. Frankie was very agreeable to it. And uh, we produced a wonderful song. Absolutely wonderful. And both being Jersey boys, of course. Yes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, it turns out that for much of my uh, younger years, I was only living 30 miles away from from, uh, Frankie. He was living in Highlands, and I was living over in New Brunswick. Uh, and also was going to school there while I was working at a local radio station. So it isn't, isn't that ironic? Isn't it just? If I can, I'd like to, to ask Frankie a question or two. Uh, now, you're very well known, obviously, in the popular music business. So when Charlie approached you, what did you think? First of all, I, I, uh, I was wondering, I said, well, you know, he's, I've, I've heard a lot of great country stuff from him during the uh, the years and uh, and when he told me he was kind of moving wanted to move in a different direction a little skeptical you know i figured well you know country guy okay you know i'll uh, you know let, let me let me see the lyrics and uh you know and we'll see what we could do and uh you know when i read the lyrics i said yeah that's you know i, I knew right away that we could get something really great out of him so we started working and I guess the rest is history, huh? <laughs> yes. How, how difficult did you find it to compose to, to the lyric that, uh, that Charlie had written? I didn't find it too difficult because, you know, the lyrics are well, well written. And, and I just thought back to, to New York and the scene. And, uh, 
you know, it came pretty rapidly. Um, I think within maybe a week, uh, I think, wasn't it, Charlie, or a week and a half, I had something that I, I was showing you. Yeah, it was about I 10 days, it. yeah. But yeah, it wasn't difficult at all. It was just a lot of fun. I threw myself into the project, and uh, before you knew it, it was done. Just a lot of fun doing it. Plus the fact that he and I are both about the same age, and uh, we're in New York at this you know, same time in the in, in my case it was the late seventies to early eighties, so I think uh, Frankie could draw on some of the similar experiences that I had, which is reflected in the storyline. Now I know Frankie uh, in this song you tried something a little bit produ- a little bit different in the production of this. You used horns for the first time. Yes, uh, uh, most of the music that I that I write and I produce is geared more, more toward vocal, uh, vocal harmony, uh, and, and pop and, um, uh, doo-wop type, uh, styles. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, you know, with the cabaret song, you need the horns. I mean, that's, that's for sure. You know, I, I tried it. I, you know, I worked through and, um, and I, I think I, I have a good, uh, you know, a good, taste for the horns now you know uh i i can't wait to uh, work work more with them be careful what you wish for frankie i know (laughs) (laughs) i don't want to telegraph uh the lyrics really uh that you're all going to hear pretty soon but uh there is one line in there uh feminine perfection by my side all the while for uh guys women love to hear that said to them. And, and you say it works very well? It works very well. Well, Linda loves it, but I oh, well, of course. Yeah. It to anybody else. <laughs> could, could you just mind, would you mind repeating? I just want to write it down. <laughs> so you could use it? <laughs> yeah, but say it slowly. I'm a, say it slowly. I'm a slow writer. Uh, feminine perfection by my side all the while. Is that with a knee on the end? <laughs> Only, only in England, I think. <laughs> okay, uh, now look, I, I, what I want to do is, is ask you, I, I believe there's a gala evening in Los Angeles in April next year uh, to celebrate the 2017 winners. Is that right? And, and I think you've been there before, Charlie, uh, with several successes in different genres. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, would, would you uh, tell the listeners uh, and give them a little taster of what happens on the gala night. Well, this will be, uh, the mayor will proclaim this uh, Frankie Goes Hollywood uh, week. <laughs> uh, that's the first thing that will take place. Uh, Frankie will come out here um, and I'll pick him up at LAX, probably drive him to his hotel, depending on the mood he's in. But um, it's going to be the Academia Awards and it's going to be held in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. We're not going to fill up 100,000 seats for this thing. But what they've done, and they, they've now in the third year of it, um, they have a very nice what they call Hall of Champions uh, at the end of the Rose Bowl. And uh, they have, uh, it's all outdoors, which is nice because that time of year, it's, it's always very nice out here. And um, they have the different honorees go to three different hotels. And each of the hotels, they're picked up by these big white limousines and the limousines take them to the uh, hall of champions where they get out and then they go into the red carpet. Then, then, then from there uh, they have the award ceremony about an hour or so later. So it's very nice, uh, very elegant and uh, it'll be, um, it'll just be nice to be there, but especially nice that Frankie and I are going to be there for a song that we wrote. You, you just might explain to him that he can't roll the red car up and take it home with him afterwards. <laughs> so stay, stay, where, stay where it is. It is truly an honor to be uh, going to these types of things. I think this applies to any form of uh, entertainment or business or whatever uh, prompts people to turn on all the bright lights and have the camera people there and all that stuff. It's interesting, though, that there is a protocol that you have to follow. Um, everybody has to be roughly five feet apart and walk in a certain cadence, step, repeat the step, 
to get another angle, then move on five feet or so. Then the next person comes up. Um, my first award uh, ceremony, Dwight Yoakam, was ahead of me. This was back, gosh, this is back like almost five years ago. And he tripped. <laughs> he, he tripped on the red carpet, almost fell down. But all these PR people and all these paparazzi people were like about ready to, to gasp. So we had to, all of us in the line had to back up five feet to let him go do this all, all over again. But there's a very strict protocol. Every time you go on a red carpet, there's a PR person that has one of these uh, white uh, easel boards, and they write down your name and the category and all that. And you don't leave until the PR person says, I, I've got this all written down, down now, go ahead. So it's, it's, it's a very structured thing. Wow. But when people see it at the end, it all looks so natural. I've had fun. <laughs> I know uh, Frankie will be making the uh, trip to Los Angeles to the Academia Awards ceremony. And um, how are you feeling about that, Frankie? Are you excited already? I, I've been excited uh, ever since we got the uh, nomination and uh, always wanted to visit L.A. I never had the chance to. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I, I think it's going to be wonderful. And uh, and actually, uh, a lot of people from Jersey want to follow me over there. So I don't know what uh, what's going to happen with that. But uh... I think it's about time we played shimmering white satin black tuxedo. So sit yourselves back, relax and listen to the wonderful piece of music from Charles Ecker, Mr. Frank Musumisi. Fabulous shimmering white satin black tuxedo, written by Charles Ecker, performed by Frankie M. Composition, arrangement, and production by Frankie M. There's also a video that has been produced by Will Stenner of Stenner Productions, which matches the excellence of the song itself. I think you have to agree with me that piece of music you have just listened to is pure genius. Listen to your Listen 
Now we have a surprise for you. I've got two special songs for you. Um, that are my picks to click. Well, first up, we have the lovely Rachel Austin and a track called Ballerina. Uh, Rachel is no longer, I believe, doing music, but she is very talented and uh, her picture books and her little furry animals and things that she does, uh, I'm sure are standing there in good stead. And I know she's selling plenty. It was a track that you could find on her EP. In fact, I went down to Gloucestershire, uh, which is quite a few miles away from where I live, to uh, support her. And uh, I had a very good night in actual fact. Went with a couple of colleagues from uh, what was then Splash Radio. From the very talented Rachel Austin, listen to Ballerina. A perfect routine I was happy eating ice cream and just watching she would dance in front of people daily I would just be thinking maybe I'll start dancing no one ever knew what I was thinking She's got perfection of flow Like a river And each time I see her I wish that I could dance like a ballerina She's got direction I can't help but wonder Why I'm nothing like her If only I could dance like a ballerina Someone buy a perfect costume Drown her in expensive perfume Full of sweet love Now I'm still just holding on to ice cream She's up there dancing What a sweet love No one ever knew what I was thinking She's got perfection of flow Like a river And each time I see her I wish that I could dance like a ballerina She's got direction I can't help but wonder Why I'm nothing like her If only I could dance like a ballerina to be up there where she is looking back at me with a perfect dance for all the world to see cause she's got perfection of flow like a river each time I see her I wish that I could dance like a ballerina her direction is Nothing like her I never had the chance to be A ballerina Ballerina Now we have Rhett Davis, uh, a very, very good friend of mine. 
Uh, we normally have a nice bit of banter when we're together. Uh, but the song I've chosen is from his album called Spirit. It's called I Am The Eagle. This is Mr. Perfection himself, Mr. Brett Davis. There once was a silver grey fox of great beauty who lived very deep in the woods. Afraid of the meadow where life once before had treated her worse than it should. And to think of the mountain beyond the green meadow did surely bring fear to her heart. For she'd heard the stories of all the great hunters and shivered and cried. Dark. Tired of living a life of dark shadows, the fox ventured out in the light and rejoiced at the sound and the smell of the meadow while keeping her shelter inside. Then all at once such fear overcame her as a shadow passed over the sun. And as she heard the cry of the great hunting eagle, she knew it was over. I am the eagle, the sweet soaring eagle I've come to take you away High up the mountain, past sparkling blue rivers And show you the place where I stay Please do not fear me, for I will not harm you No matter what others may say and Though it is true that our lives should not mingle Need of some friendship today Though she didn't know why She accepted the offer And reluctantly climbed on his back And the woods and the meadow Were left far behind her It seemed she would never get back Then the fox sensed a yearning Deep within the great eagle And she felt something stir in her too Could she the fox fall in love Fall in love with her too Could this eagle be lonely And searching for someone To help him rule his domain Had he ever had someone To love and protect him Bring him in out of the rain And the eagle spoke soft And his words were a wonder In a voice touched with sadness it seemed Even though I must hunt In the name of survival I need not kill all that I see For I am the eagle, the sweet soaring eagle I've come to take you away High up the mountain, past sparkling blue rivers And show you the place where I stay Please do not fear me, for I will not harm you No matter what others may say Though it is true that our lives should not be a need of some friendship today. I've need of some friendship today. I've need of some love today. Well, folks, I'm afraid that's the end of the show for now. I hope you've enjoyed listening to the show as much as I've enjoyed playing you all the wonderful music. Chris Duvall will be back soon with lots more specials for you. And I hope you can join me. I'm sure you can. So for now, I'm going to say thank you to Frankie. Thank you to Charles. And thank you to everybody else in the independent world being so damn good. This is Chris Duval saying good night, God bless, and I'll see you soon. Good night.
been listening to Chris Duval Presents with some of the best independent music anywhere in the world. I'm Tommy Brewster from New Zealand, proud to be associated with this show and this station. So tune in again next week for the music you love to hear.